Hello and welcome to Doing Life Together, episode 26. It is your host, Sonia Eckel, and I hope you're doing amazing. Tonight, we are going to talk about lashes. And hey, I just brewed some lemon, echinacea, honey, tea. I appreciate your healing prayers. I've been dealing with this <laughs> cough, and I'm not sure. Hopefully, it goes well. All right, but I am super, super excited for our topic tonight, okay? So let's talk about eyelashes. Okay, seriously, pray me up, y'all. All my praying people, I need this thing to go away. It is a pain in the butt. All right, so eyelashes. So just a little bit about me. I am an eye girl. So, you know, I know some of you notice someone's hair and other people notice their smile or their teeth or their nose or whatever. I'm totally an eye girl. I'm always looking at people's eyes. And so over the course of time, I, I also like to make it my policy to compliment someone when, when they have beautiful eyes or whatever. Well, of course, in recent years, people have these stunning eyelashes. And so sometimes I, I'm like, oh my gosh, your lashes are amazing. And so I, I have very blonde eyelashes. So without mascara, it kind of, at least I feel like it looks like I have no lashes. And so I've been wearing mascara since I was like 12 or something crazy. And then just, I don't know, 15 years ago, I started catching wind of an eyelash serum on the market. And then of course, there's eyelash extensions where you go into a, a lash salon and they do extensions and there's all natural, right? I'm so jealous of those of you who just naturally have beautiful, dark, lush, curly lashes. Tell me your secrets. Were you just born like that? Is that just one of those genetic blessings? I do believe sometimes you're just blessed, but if there's a secret to this, I want to know, you know, I know that um, there's a lot of wives, I don't know, wives tale of what helps. And castor oil is made of resurgence. And some people say this helps grow your eyelashes, um, whatever. Give me your, give me your secrets. So we've got mascara, which is probably the most commonly utilized method of enhancing eyelashes. Um, we have eye extensions that are professionally done. We have serums that are supposed to make your lashes grow thicker and longer, all the things. We have Lash extensions that you do yourself are not extensions. False lashes? Is that what we call them? What's the actual right term? Um, fake eyelashes is used to kind of what we call them. So I had worn fake, fake eyelashes. I'll call them that. I'm sure that's not the right term. But I had worn them once in my life about a decade ago. And I, um, a makeup artist put, put them on me. And she's like, oh my goodness, they look amazing. They really set off your eyes. And boy, did they ever. I felt like all anyone could see was my eyes and they were heavy. So I could like feel them. I literally felt like a fish out of water the entire night. And by the end of the, the night, I was like, get these things off, get them off, get them off. So at that point, I pretty much decided, I don't think those are for me. Now, fortunately in about a decade, probably a lot has happened in that world. But anyway, so, um, okay, so talk to me, put in the comments, what do you love for lashes? Do you have a certain mascara that you love? Do you have, do you use serums? Um, do, do you go get lash extensions? I mean, if you're game to share, right? Like we're doing life together. Just imagine it's two, two girlfriends chatting because that's often where we learn from each other. So I just have to disclaim before we jump into this, as with all of my things, I am no eyelash expert. I am just going to share some stuff I've learned, and honestly, some of it I'm a little appalled about. So mascara. You know, I am a health nut. I read a lot of labels. I uh, can tend toward a little obsessive on food labels, and then my eyes really got open to cleaning labels and wow, I totally transformed our home on cleaning stuff. And I just didn't really want to learn about mascara because I really thought, what are my options to have something that looks like no eyelashes? And honestly, I have decently long, but they're just so light. It looks like I have none or 
mascara. So I don't, I would say 2020 hindsight is don't put your head in the sand on this one. When you wear something every single day, there are safer options out here in the world. And so do your research on organic because a lot of mascaras have um, certain, it's mostly in the preservatives for, so far I can tell, but there's also coal tar and I don't know. Anyway, but the preservatives, like there's formaldehyde in a lot of the formulas. Uh, there even, I guess, is timisrol, which is a mercury-based preservative, which obviously research mercury, y'all. You, you do not want this in or in or on or near your body. So yes, Jessica, great to see you. So Jessica, I'm seeing you mention peptides, which will be, I think we need to deep dive peptides, one of these doing life together. So uh, I, I think that that's a whole nother world and I'm excited to deep dive it with you guys. So let me see here. Honestly, I think, okay, I think they look fake. I wear mascara and I change out my mascara every three months. Thanks, Natalie, which is super important because you don't want it to grow bacteria. Like you don't need an eye infection from your mascara. Um, Susan, good to see you. I heard a drop of lavender in your mascara is good. She's really giving a shout out to Mary Kay mascara, which is a reasonable price, but she's disclaiming. She's not sure what's in it. Another friend also gave me a shout out to Mary Kay mascara earlier today. So there we go. To all my Mary Kay peoples. Um, and I see someone on Facebook. It's not giving me your name. Tiny lashes. I've tried the glue on ones. I wore them about a year. Then I developed an allergy to the glue. And this is something I've heard of. The eyelids started getting red, itchy, and swollen. I had to take them off right when I got home with water and coconut oil. It really hurt. So now I have no lashes left. They all came off. I've tried the magnetic ones, too high maintenance. So if I wear anything, it's a bit of mascara. There's no certain brand. Okay. Thank you for sharing. No worries. Oh, it's Meredith. Hi, Meredith. Thank you. It doesn't always show me the Facebook user. So it's just this Facebook user. So you can... Um, Labrai. Okay. Yes. I love that, Carly. Okay. So mascara, do your research. Make sure it doesn't have the toxic crap in it if you're going to use it, right? And I'm preaching to myself here. All right. Now let's talk about serums. So again, about, I would estimate 15 years ago, I learned about the prescription eyelash serum that was all the rage. It was making everyone's eyes long, eyelashes long and gorgeous. And it actually came out of a glaucoma medica made medication. So all these glaucoma docs were giving these drops to their like 70, 80 year old patients. And they were noticing that if they just had glaucoma in one eye and not the other, they were only applying the drops in one eye. And that eye was getting these gorgeous long eyelashes. Well, the company that makes that was smart, like, hey, there's a market here. We're going to jump on this train. So that became super popular. It's a serum. It works to make your lashes long. When I found out about it, I was still pregnant or breastfeeding for years on end. It was kind of like with four boys, you know, it, it was going and they said, don't use it pregnant or, or breast, breastfeeding. And I have blue eyes and they really recommend caution with light eyes because if there's any melanin, it can actually increase and you can get like a brown spot in your eye. So it also can change the color of your iris. Like if you have brown eyes, it can actually change the color. Um, it also can cause reddening of the hoods of the, the lids of your eyes. And then just recently, I learned something I did not know. It can cause, okay, so our eyes have these like periocular fat pads. I don't know if that's the right word, but anyway, it's around the eye fat pads. And we don't like fat just anywhere, but you don't want to lose your fat pads in your face because that's what gives you that youthful appearance and doesn't allow the skin just to sink in and wrinkle, right? So fat pads around your eyes are really important if for appearances anyway, for youthful looks. Guess what, you guys? Many of the serums, so the prescription one for sure, has, and I actually was researching this, 
So again, I'm just going to regurgitate what I learned, but you do your own research. You know, I am Miss Do Your Own Research. Like that's my, my name, Miss Do Your Own Research. Don't look to me. I will bring us topics and I will bring the conversation. But I always tell my kids too, don't just do it because mom said. You need to know why you're doing it. Like, ah, anyway, okay. So the active ingredient in the prescription is bimat bimatoprost, which is a PGF2 alpha analog of prostaglandin. Woo, these are tongue-tied tongue, tongue -tied stuff. Um, that's in the prescription one. Now, it is regulated by the FDA, so any doctor who will give you a prescription to the prescription lash serum, they're going to have to be doing tests. They're going to have to monitor you. Like, they're not throwing these prescriptions out like candy because there is an awareness. There is some possible side effects. So now we've seen in recent years, there's lash serums everywhere, anywhere. Every company has a lash serum. So I mistakenly assumed, okay, it must not have that pharmaceutical drug that the prescription has that has all those side effects. And of course, they all claim that they use natural ingredients like biotin and whatever. Well, in my research, I'm, I'm kind of cringing actually because also they just kind of reformulated this prostaglandin into, I'm gonna put this in my own words, but kind of like lab formulated a different one that's not regulated by the FDA. And they put them still in those. So those still have similar effects of the fat pads decreasing and the lids like there's a there's a term for it i don't know like anyway okay you guys can do that um you'll want to look for ingredients like isopropyl clopastinate isopropyl clopastinate um anyway there's different names anything that has like prost p-r-o-s-t it might be a prostaglandin and it might not be something you want around your eyes now really quick a lot of people have used castor oil essentially as like the old way of doing lash serum research if this also has prostaglandins in it i thought i saw somewhere that it may also have some naturally occurring that could have a similar effect so just be i guess just go in with your eyes wide open on that all right so Let's see how we're all doing. Ah, oh, now, right? Okay, so that's serums. So the thing is, is I, in my research, have found one serum so far, and there might be more, that has no... Hey, Instagram, y'all are here. Okay, let's see. Can you hear me on Facebook and YouTube? It looks like my mic went, I don't know what happened there. So Facebook, YouTube, um, X, how we doing? Can you hear me? I just want to make sure we're good. Mm. Did it pick up my right mic? Okay. Um, now we're okay. Hey, Janelle, good to see you. Thank you. Okay. So where did I end up before my mic went out? Okay. Anyway, I found a serum without prostaglandins. So here's the deal. I'm going to be talking about a bunch of stuff tonight. You know, I try to keep this to about 25 minutes. That's my goal. And so actually I did a longer video today. If you want the brands and you know, whatever, then just comment, actually DM me, because what I've learned is on some of the platforms, when you comment, when I'm live, the comments disappear after I'm done being live. So um, that doesn't work out so good. All right. I think the battery on my mic died. All right. Anyway, carrying on, just type or DM me the word lash, and I will send you kind of the deeper dive. I'll give you all the details. But if you're looking or using serums, they found with glaucoma patients and that particular thing, there's a lot of studies now around it because it was something that doctors were noticing because get this, 
if the patient only had glaucoma in one eye, they were usually only treating one eye. So one eye had super long lashes and the skin was getting all saggy and weird. Okay. So the doctors are like, whoa, what is going on? And then studies started happening and they have, I think I heard a hundred percent, like it's a very high percentage who have, um, these studies say that these prostaglandins are causing that Im impact. So there we go. Okay. We're back. All right. Thank you guys. Next up are professional lash extensions. So are they a win? Are they not a win? I have talked to some friends. I got to say that they're probably more natural. Well, okay. Let's talk about this. So I know someone who used to do professional eyelash extensions. And so I, of course, had to pick her brain before this call. And she said that a lot of her clients would come in and their lashes were just nubs. And what she learned in the process of becoming a lash person, tech, whatever, she said that certain lashes are too heavy or the lash is too heavily loaded, but also the quality of the lash matters and that some seem to be much harder on the actual lash than others. She mentioned the brand Extreme. I'm not a lash artist. I don't even know what that is or if it still exists, but she said that was more expensive, but she found that long-term people's lashes stayed nice, like their real lashes, Okay. So she felt it's important to make sure that your lash salon is using a healthy option. Um, for her, their salon, California, was she thought about 400 for the initial getting all the lashes done and then less to keep it up. Now I talked to another friend who's been able to get hers done every couple of weeks for 80 bucks. So obviously it's really going to vary the cost and time. So um, my one friend said it takes about an hour for, to get it done. So there's that. My understanding is they use glue. As I researched the glue, the glue is the biggest concern with these from everything I can find. And most of these glues, I didn't find any that said they were formaldehyde-free. And they have another chemical, I can't remember the name, also in them. Also... To Meredith's point, when she was getting them, she developed sort of an allergy to it, which also can happen. And so there's that. All right. Most of the issues that I could find about salon lash extensions, where they're actually gluing the lash onto your lash, is the glue is questionable. And if you do too heavy of lashes, it can have a long-term negative impact on your lashes. Okay. Okay. How are we doing? Is this interesting, y'all? Like, I don't know. Okay. So you decide what you want to do. What What is it worth to you? I just think it's always good to do things with full disclosure. And I, the, I'm not saying this is full disclosure, but at least we're talking about it, right? Okay. Now we have the lash extensions that now you can do at home. False lashes, fake lashes. I don't know what they're called. Anyway, so I recently saw a friend and uh, I was like, oh my goodness, your lashes look amazing. And she started going off like, oh my goodness, I love these so much. I don't need to do mascara anymore. I don't think I'll ever go back. Rave review. Uh, and so I decided to go ahead and purchase. So I asked her the brand, all of that, and I purchased I was actually going to show you how we put them on live and I kind of chickened out. So I did a video of me actually putting them on my lashes. So again, if you comment lash, that's going to be in it. If you are already a lash expert, you do not need this video because I am like two weeks in. I'm the last person who should be teaching you how to put lashes on. But if you are lash curious, that's what I'm naming this, lash curious. I think I was lash curious. And so if you're lash curious and you want like, hey, I'm curious how you do that. Um, just DM me lash and I will send you the video. If nothing else, you'll get a good chuckle out of it. Okay. So the lashes I have on right now are the fake lashes. All right. Here's the deal. First day I put them on, I felt like it was all thumbs, all thumbs. It was, it was horrible. So in the little kit, you get this little tweezer thing and they have you like practice. Now I will say this, they had awesome demo videos and kudos to them on that. Also, they have no formaldehyde. They have no prostaglandin 
in their glues, things like that. So, so far as I can tell, at least at this point in time, seems decently safe. Now, what are we going to know in 10 years? Well, we'll see. But anyway, this little thing here, it, this glue is pressure activated and it kind of has like a magnetic property. And instead of like a lot of false lashes, go on your lash line behind your real lashes. And these go in front, they actually attach to your lash. So similar to what you would do at a salon with this special glue that is formaldehyde free. And they're supposed to be sort of waterproof. And yeah. So anyway, if you want all the details and to see me actually putting them on, you can. Now, these are too too long for me, honestly. Um, they're my last set that came with my little starter package. I did the, the short ones first. I actually really liked those. I thought those were great. However, because I didn't know what I was doing, they fell off in a day. And my eyes were kind of irritated. And I was like, okay, I don't know about this. So I put them on again. And the next time it was better. And I got like three days. Now, you're supposed to be able to get seven to 10 days out of them, which means seven to 10 days of waking up, really not feeling like I need to put makeup on because mascara was kind of my biggest thing because of my, you know, looking like I have no lashes unless I put mascara on them because they're blonde. So, um, okay. So just DM me the word lash. If you want that fun video, I'll send it over. And you guys know this is outside of my comfort zone to be putting on fake lashes, you know, on video. You do know that, right? But again, this whole series has been out of my comfort zone. I am a very private person. I don't normally share this stuff with the world, but I just felt, well, God called me to it, honestly. And I just feel like we need to talk about all the things, even eyelashes, okay? Because it matters. Like you need to know some of this stuff if you didn't know. Some of you maybe did know. But anyway, so these are super long because they were the la they were the longest length. I tried trimming some of them, so do not look too close because I was curious. I, I, I read some people could trim their lashes if they were too long. I was like, well, okay, so I cut them. Um, but I like the shorter ones. They feel more comfortable. And this particular brand feels super light. When I get them on right, I don't feel that I even have them on. If I could feel them, I would be out. Like, I just can't. And if they irritate my eyes, I'm out. I can't. My eyes are very sensitive. So I just have to be super careful anyway. Okay. You want to hear my secret? That was just a game changer for me though, to get them. I think my next one I kept on maybe four or five days. I haven't made it a week yet, but okay. This goes back to sleep. Did we, we talk, have we talked about sleep yet? We were going to talk about sleep. At some point, we're going to talk about sleep because insomnia is a very real thing. When we moved to Texas, so when we were in South Dakota, we had blackout shades that worked really well. And so I never wore eye masks in South Dakota. In Texas, we just haven't been able to black out the light. And in all my health research, having a completely dark room or sleeping in the complete dark is really key for your melatonin production and your circadian rhythm and your health and all the things. So I began wearing an eye mask and I found a brand I love. It's 100% silk. Oh, by the way, these are 100% man-made silk. So they're not real silk, but they feel like silk, I guess. These are 100% silk. So I found this brand. I loved it. It's a double strap. I didn't like single straps because they put too much pressure on my eyes. So I've always now for almost six years slept with a silk double strap eye mask to keep the light out. And at first I hated it. It was very awkward. I did not like it. And then um, I kind of have found that it's my sleep cue now. So once I got past it feeling awkward and weird and different, now I have like this, this sleep etiquette that I do before bed every night. And it is pretty awesome actually because I will... I'll pull up my weighted blanket. I have a very special weighted blanket. It is not just an average weighted blanket. That's another doing life together. We might go there someday as well. Um, I have to do Norwex just to pay for all my wellness obsessions. That's the truth of the matter, right? No, I'm just kidding. Uh, it does help though with that too. Anyway, so then I put on my eye mask. And when I have two straps, I put one strap. Oh, you guys, this is really what I do because... If we talked about curly hair, I don't wash my hair every day, right? So I just put the strap underneath here. 
Oh yeah, I'm quite a sight, I will tell you that. But anyway, so we put the first strap up there and the other one hangs down and that way it didn't push on my eyes. Well, when I did these fake lashes that are pretty fabulous, um, I put on my mask and it pushed on these long lashes, right? It was probably pushing on my regular lashes too, but I was now feeling it on these extra long lashes. And so I found this. Oh my goodness, you guys, y'all need this, whether or not you ever use fake lashes. This is the best thing. I'm obsessed. If you comment lash, I'll also send you my favorite new sleep mask. It has memory foam around it. It's silk and it has the back strap, which I normally am not a single strap, but it doesn't pull on my eyes because of this. Oh my word. So fabulous. So if you have any light in your room, this is a side note, bonus material, I would say you should wear an eye mask. Just make sure you're not having. All right. And you guys, I, I said comment lash. Actually DM me the word lash because the live on some of the platforms, whatever gets commented goes away after the live. And then I go back to see who said it and who I'm going to send this video to. And it's not there. So if you can just send me a personal message, whatever platform. And if you haven't yet, take a minute to like, follow, and feel free to share this with someone who maybe would also benefit from knowing the ins and outs of lashes. All right. How was it, friends? Was that helpful? I hope so. So we just covered the various lash approaches, all natural. I'm jealous. I, I would like to be in that camp serum, but knowing what you're in for, if you are choosing just average serums, do your research. Okay. So I was watching a doctor and actually he was saying that he would, he works with women, um, in skincare a lot and like helping them maintain their youthful appearance. And he was finding certain patients. He could not resolve their eye wrinkles. Like it was just like, ah, what's going on. And then he came to find out that they'd been using lash serums with prostaglandins that was impacting the fat pads, which was impacting how the skin is. Yeah, fun facts, right? Helen, you are in the, the sleep mask club. I love my mask. So to, to finish that, pull up my weighted bat blanket, throw on my mask, I'm out within five minutes. Like my body goes, whoop, it's time for sleep. So if you do struggle with sleep, that's always one of the things you're gonna find is sleep etiquette. Um, doing certain things, less blue light before night, blah, 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 which anyway. Okay. Um, all right. Yeah. So I will give you all the details. Just comment lash. I'll send you everything, that, whatever I've, I've got here, I'll send you brands and links. Oh, and before we close tonight, this here is going live at noon on March 1st. I have been product testing it for a little bit and I am obsessed. Okay. So I love the new Norwex skincare line. I'll be honest. I liked their old line. I love the new line. I'm obsessed with the eye cream. I'm also, and I've seen help for my eyes, even though yes, I have used eye serums, mm. but this night cream, mm, it is so wonderful, especially if you have dry skin, which I do. This goes live at noon on March 1st. Okay. Noon central that is. And if you're a Norwex consultant, get your buns in there and order it. I'm hoping it doesn't sell out. If you're a customer and you order from me, it's just norwex.com forward slash Sonia Eckel, S-O-N-Y-A-E-C-E-C-K-E-L. And um, you can order it, but this is great. And what's cool is it has a refill in it. And so then you can put the refill on autosave and save 10%. And you can also percent and you get $10, about $10 off versus buying the dispenser. But the first round, you're going to want to buy the dispenser. And then I would get the eye cream for sure. Cleanser is pretty fabulous too. All right. I think that's it. Um, oh my goodness. Definitely go back to the sleep mask. And yes, I'm going to send the serum brand that I've tracked down without the prostaglandins. Um, I'll, I, I think I've got all of that in the video, so I'll just, I'll just send it to you. I'm going to put links in so you guys can find them easily. And, um, I'll tell you what I tell you what I've learned there. If you want a little deeper dive. All right. We'll see you all soon. Have a blessed rest of your evening. Thanks for joining me.